I see, I see. So central banks are going to offer retail accounts to the general public and business accounts right straight there at the central bank. And, and they happen to call this something like CBDC. Well, in that case, what we're witnessing is that the central banks are preparing as bank regulators to compete against the regulated. Now, is that fair competition? I wonder how the competition authorities look at that. If the regulator of an industry suddenly decides, oh, we're going to step into the arena and we ourselves as the powerful regulator who can boss around anyone in the industry and tell them what to do, we're not going to compete with them. Obviously, that's not competition on the level playing field so much as for mm -hmm. sure. It certainly would explain the past decades of anti-bank policies taken by a lot of the central banks, such as the ECB. Because if your goal was anyway to wipe out the banking system by competing against them, then yeah, you'd, you'd soften them up by um, having really disastrous interest rate policies that uh, kill off bank profits and Im imposing vast costs through totally exaggerated, unnecessary regulate, regulatory burdens. And then you move in for the kill by launching central bank digital currencies, or what you call that, which are actually just uh, retail accounts at the central bank. And then you could also trigger a little crisis, a little banking crisis, and then you'd be sure that all the depositors would move their money from the banking system to the central bank. And that's, uh, you know, then just switch off the light in the banking system. And then they have full control and full power. Absolute power. Corrupt, well, absolutely. Soviet Union, you know, um, the Sovietization of the banking system, just the one central bank um, would then survive and all the other banks would be would disappear, like in the Soviet Union in those days when it was a monobank system. But surely, why would a central bank want this? Because they've already got pretty much full power. And surely by making it a one bank system, they're just putting more work on themselves because still all the groundwork needs to be done by someone. And if it's not done by the individual banks in certain areas, it has to be done by the yeah. central bank, surely. Well, you certainly wouldn't do it if your goal was to create sustainable high economic growth that is um, without inflation, without crisis and equitable. Because for that, you want to have as many banks and as small the banking sector, you know, and you know, small banks consisting of as many small banks as possible. But that's clearly not the goal. <laughs> so we have to conclude the goal is to end economic growth um, because that will be consistent if you don't want any more economic growth. And that would explain why central banks are also now suddenly saying, oh, um, we're suddenly very concerned about the environment and we think economic growth is the problem. Mm -hmm. which of course is nonsense economic growth is not the problem and it's not economic growth that hurts the environment it is environmental destruction that hurts the environment it is pollution that <laughs> hurts the environment and you can have as much pollution as you want with zero economic growth you know so it's complete nonsense conflating the issues but that's what's being sold to the public see so then smes and and people and businesses alike will all rely on capital markets for our funding and as you won't get any economic growth but that, is that what will happen well essentially you won't get economic growth and you'll see therefore a lot of companies going bankrupt um which fits into the you know 2020 covid policies um which were also of a, a similar ilk and um, so no more growth means um that there will be a massive further concentration of power in the hands of ever smaller numbers of people and players that are ever bigger okay and just to play the other side of a the coin then it doesn't seem very um let's say realistic that a central bank would ever do this because all loans to businesses would effectively stop as soon as they do this um and it would just have such an obvious negative impact that they could never hold their hands up and say it wasn't our fault it was the bank's fault we have no responsibility here well, I, I, I doubt that. I think it's possible to arrange a scenario where they can say, oh, this is just happening now. And, and so, you know, it's not our fault. I mean, already the ECB is arguing we have to introduce central bank digital currency because there's demand out there. You know, the Bitcoin and all that mm. is evidence. We have to act, which is nonsense. They don't have to respond to that. 
um, at all. And they certainly don't have to intervene to create retail accounts for the general public at the central bank, thereby ripping up the centuries old concord art between, you know, division of power between the central bank and the banking system um, and making this very aggressive anti-bank movement. But it fits with the other anti-bank policies that central banks have been taking um, for many years, particularly in the Eurozone and, and some other places.